Shabbat Shalom family. All praises, all praises to Yahweh by Shem and Mashiach, Yahweh Shabbat Rakathah, hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. Let me check my. Let me see. Make sure I can hear myself. Swipe. Can y'all hear me? Type in some nines if y'all can hear me before we get started. How my family doing out there? Shalom, shalom. Do it, let me see my, see, you want to let me see the comments. Do, yeah, up, do the comments pop up on your? Shalom, family, how y'all doing? All right, hold on, I got a live chat option. It's pulling up now. If, if y'all can hear me or uh, anything, I see y'all climbing in the room, but I don't see none of y'all on the comment board. Uh, type in some nines for me before we get started. Oh, okay. The rib just typed in nine. Okay. Uh, how y'all doing, family? Shabbat Shalom. I'm wait till everybody climb in. Y'all see what's on the topic today? It's called the appetite of the beast within. We're going to really get into appetite, what actually the beast is and who is the beast inside of you. And we're going to talk about characteristics and what we're supposed to be eating, what we're not supposed to be eating, who we're supposed to have ourselves around, who we're not supposed to be around. Shalom, family. Shalom, shalom. Chose, what to say, choose to create. Shalom, shalom, queen. Randall, shalom, king. P. Mim, shalom, king. One soul of life. What's up with you, Queen? How you been? Young Jeremiah, Shalom King. How my family doing? We're going to wait for a few more people to climb on in. All praise. Shabbat Shalom. They say Shabbat Shalom to the bros. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. So look, to the right of me, I got Ezra. Shalom. It's my brother to the left. Shalom, family. It's actually my right hand man. I'm the white side <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's your it's your real. Y'all know. Up, I started off teaching with this brother right here. When he came up with some uh, amazing lessons through the spirit of the most high. All praise. Obed in the building, Shalom Hebrew. Big trucker. What's up with the Hebrew? Aniyah Bot, my queen, Shabbat Shalom, light beams. That's what it is. All right, we're going to wait till a couple more. Yaquim Maccabee, what up, Hebrew? You need to send me some beats over, man. What's up? All right, let's get it in. We got enough people in here so far. Again, this uh, topic is called the appetite of the beast within. I really want to talk about things that's going on inside of our bodies that we need to check. You know what I'm saying? Things uh, just basically being controlled by this beast and then when you start getting an understanding of what we finna talk about you will see that the mark of the beast ain't so far-fetched especially when it comes to a spiritual level and you can actually take this mark before this stuff even actually actually happen in the spiritual realm by giving in and to the beast and a lot of people have already given themselves over to the beast so of course when the actual physical mark of the beast come it ain't going to be much harder or nothing like that because we've been subjecting ourselves to this beast within our entire lives. And you know what I'm saying? I notice it. I'm pretty sure these bros right here notice it and everybody else have noticed it. And, and it's time to really start within self. within self. And it's time to really start fighting against that beast. But he a mother, y'all. He is a mother. Boy, I'm telling you. He is, man. And, and we know what a beast is. A beast is an animal. It's what a beast is. It's an animal. It's a savage. And, and, and you know, it have instincts to do what? Eat, eat, destroy, devour, right. sleep, kill. destroy, kill, and that's it. So if I'm talking about a beast within, then that means this same beast that we have spiritually with inside of us do what? Eat, kill, destroy, devour, and consume. So if you actually start reading in scripture and you get into Genesis and you go over when he created the animals and he created Adam and Eve, what did he tell Adam and Eve before he told them to go forth and be fruitful and multiply? He told them to have dominion over what? The beast of the field. See, we read that and we just think physical. But if you actually read that from a spiritual perspective and, and open up your eye and actually listen to what it's talking about and you actually put yourself in that position, you supposed to have dominion over the beast that's within you. And a lot of us don't. A lot of us don't. And it goes unchecked so long, and then next thing you know, you're being that very animal that you 
that you teach you against. It. You be you become the very thing, like Uriel just said, you become the very thing that you hate. So uh, yeah. I want to start this off in the book of Proverbs, family. <clears throat> we're going to start off in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 1, and we're going to read 1 through 8. Go ahead, Hebrew. You all good. And we're going to read 1 through 8. Type in y'all nines once y'all get here, family. Shabbat Shalom, Mike Ayel, Ban Yisrael. What's up with you? Chantel, Shalom, Shalom. How my family doing out there? We're going to start this off in the book of Proverbs, chapter 23, 1 through 8. After we get done with these two, when we go into this lesson, I'm going to flip the screen for y'all, for y'all can read, because we got a lot of names and words that we need to look up. So make sure y'all got y'all pens and y'all pads and write down everything we saying, and y'all can go back and reference everything that y'all can see that we ain't making none of this stuff up, and that the Bible is really spiritual before anything. Before it gets to the physical aspect, the Bible is an allegory book. And, and, and a lot of it has to do with you and what's going on inside of you. You know what I'm saying? We get the physical things they happen. We, we, we got proof that they happen. We got proof of the giants. We got proof they, they, they digging up skeletons bigger than uh, castles. We got proof of that. We got proof of the chariot wheels being at the bottom of the Red Sea. We got proof that, that the whole world once flooded. We got proof in the Roman records that they crucified Christ, the Messiah. So we see all these things are physical. We know they physically exist, but was this book given to us for the spiritual, uh, physical aspect, or was it given to us for the spiritual aspect and for we can overcome the physical? Huh? And that's what we really got to start looking when it's when we studying this stuff. Even though this book is a physic, it's all about metaphysics, which means beyond the physical. Because once you go into the kingdom of God, or once you leave this physical vehicle that we ignorantly call our bodies, then where 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 we at? Then we are in the spiritual realm. And like Mayor Uriel said a lot, that a lot of people live to die. But us being Israelites, and I don't mean it from the title perspective, I mean ones who's crossing over being directly connected to the power, those of us who call ourselves Israelites or the ancient Sumerians or the light beings, whichever one had sound good to you, have it sound to you, we realize that we have to die and go into a spiritual realm. So we need to be what? Dying to live, not living to die. So that's why I want to get in there and certain things have to be checked and certain things have to be calculated. See, the most I move in calculated steps and we need to, too. And this is why this lesson is very important, because we are being devoured. A lot of us are giving in to the beast before the market of beasts even get here. And that's an issue. That's a problem. So uh, I'm going to start it off in Proverbs. Type in y'all nines. We're going to get this started. Let's get it done. Type in y'all nines. We're going to start. We're in the book of Proverbs, chapter 23. Verse one through eight. Let me know when I can go, Hebrew. Let, let them get their knives in and we're gonna get it. Right. Shabbat Shalom, family. All praise to the most high. Yeah, well, yeah, most definitely. Memphis in the building. Shalom. All right, we got our knives. Let's go and get this started. Mm -hmm. All right, the book of Proverbs, chapter 23, starting at verse one. Right, make sure we're gonna read one through eight and read it very slow for them for we can really get some understanding of, of what we're talking about here. Make sure y'all jot down and write your notes. Queen Odelia, how you doing? She wrote, Shabbat Shalom. All right, let's get it, King. All right. Um, when thou sittest to eat with the ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. You see that? So it says, when thou sit down with a ruler. Now, in this aspect, we can talk up, we can talk about the authorities, we can be talking about kings and princes, which is this is talking about in this aspect, because remember, we're reading it from a biblical concept. So it says, when you sit down with somebody that's over you, it says what? Consider diligently. Consider, consider means to think. Consider, have a thought pattern, have a thought process. Diligently means what? Consistency. So it says you better be thinking very consistently of what's before you. Huh? So when you go sit at a table and you see rulers and authorities around, he's saying, look, it's a catch-22 to this. You, they just not inviting you to their feast for no reason. You beneath them. Why are they even bringing you to the table? Huh? It's a catch-22. They want something. And usually rulers are rich. Huh? Do y'all realize the rich ain't giving you nothing unless it what? Unless it actually benefit them in the end. Yeah. So if it ain't profit, if it ain't profit in them, then why are you at this table? Come on. Verse two. And put a knife to thy throat. Ooh, you see that? Put a knife to thy throat. If thou be a man given to appetite. Ooh, if thou be a man giving to appetite, it says you need to put a knife to thy throat. Huh? That means 
close your mouth. Huh? Don't use your tongue. See that? Put a knife. That means warning. If you giving in into your appetite. Now notice, it could have said food. Huh? Because it's talking about somebody sitting at a table, right? Yeah. But why didn't it say food? Why did it say appetite? See, because appetite is used in a broader sense. Appetite is way more than just a food. Appetite has something to do with this beast. And this is why this lesson is called the appetite of the beast within. Notice it's talking about appetite. It didn't say food. It didn't say water. It didn't say drinks. It didn't give out nothing uh, uh, specific. It said actual appetite, right? So what is he talking about here? Start over from one again. All right. The book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse one again. Mm -hmm. When thou sittest to eat with the ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. Watch that food that's before you. Peep it. Check it out. Make sure it's stuff that you can put in your mouth and know <clears throat> some things come with a cost. Come on. And put a knife to thy throat. You see that? Put a knife to thy throat. Put a knife to thy throat. Come on. If thou be a man given to appetite. You see that? It says cut your own throat. If you be a man giving to appetite. Now, I want y'all to hold this right here. We ain't got to We ain't gotta go there. Go ahead. What you got for me? Uh, the word heart is H3820. It says, inner man, mind, mm -hmm. will, heart, understanding. And if you go down to number eight, it says, a seat of appetite. Ooh, a seat of appetite. Let's see if I can see it. A mm. seat. Yep, they see that good. See. Look at number eight, y'all. A seat of appetite. See, that's the mind. That's that beast that we're talking about. This is what Shaul was talking about in Romans 7, where you're saying he was wrestling against the corner, against the spiritual, it was another war in his members working something he was talking about this beast this beastly nature that that we give ourselves to every single day but as we finna read when we get into genesis we supposed to have dominion over the fish in the sea right. over the beast of the field over the fowl of the air so how is how is babylon now became the the living dominion of every cage evil fowl and bird huh mm -hmm. huh how is it for beasts rising up in the last time all these things that the Most High Yod Hey Wah -Hey gave us dominion over is now controlling and ruling us. Right. We, we, come on, King. Verse three. Huh? He's uh, what was that Hebrew concordance real quick? H three eight two o. It was H three eight two o. H three eight two o. All right, come on. Verse three. Be not desirous of his dainty you see that don't be desirous of the treats he have for you don't be desirous we see that all the time we run into the rice house and you get you some chicken fried rice and you actually eating mouse because you so desirous of the smell and so desirous to eat you don't even know what they feeding you you don't even know what they feeding you same thing at this table yes everything that look good is not good everything that glitter is not gold you be around people because they statue. You be around people because they popularity, but they be dead graveyards and bringing you down. Huh? See, we have to watch who we surround ourselves around. I say this all the time. You are a living organism, meaning you digest everything that's around you. You eat anything that's around you. You don't only eat when you put things in your mouth. You eat when you hang with people. You eat when you read certain books. You eat when people, when you entertain certain conversations. See, we have to realize that anything we intake, we're eating. That's why what? Your ears, your eyes, your nose, your mouth all connects to the same thing. And it all goes into the belly and comes out of where? We know the rest of the part. Mm -hmm. Come on. Verse 3 again. Be not desirous of his dainties, mm -hmm. for they are deceitful meat. For they what? Are deceitful meat. They deceitful meat. See that? That meat have a catch-22 to it. Yeah, it look good. It's going to be sweet going in, but when it hit that belly, oh, we, it's going to be bitter. It's going to be bitter, and you're going to vomit it up. You just ate in vain, and it's going to kill you. It's going to kill you. Remember, we talking about the appetite of the beast within, though. But well, we using these scriptures to build up this, this big old premises of what we really talking about, and it's mind-blowing, especially once you start getting into this, this genesis, and you get into Thou shalt eat of every tree in the garden, but the tree of knowledge, good and evil, thou shalt not eat. Everybody want to run to the Leviticus dietary law. Don't nobody want to talk about that dietary law that was in the beginning in the garden of Eden. Huh? Okay. And guess what? Food wasn't involved. 
So this shows you that appetite is a mindset. It's spiritual. Come on. Verse four, labor not to be rich. You see that? Labor not to be rich. Don't work hard, sun up to sun down to be rich because you're supposed to be stacking your treasures up in heaven. So what are you doing sitting at this rich man table and you don't even know what you're being fed and you know he's going to be requiring something of you? Huh? And do you know you all what you eat? He got pigs and mice on this table. What do that make him? A pig and a mice. So we as Israelites, the crazy thing is, we as Israelites, we obey the dietary law that's in Leviticus, but will totally disobey the dietary law, which was in the garden. When it says, do not take counsel from this knowledge, from this tree of knowledge, good and evil. When you actually start looking up this word, a rex and a rex side, it's talking about taking counsel. So we won't eat mouse, but we hang around a rat and a snitch. We won't eat pig, but we hang around a, glut, a gluttonous Negro that eats all the time and eat different doctrines all the time, belching and fall off of every wind of doctrine. Sound like a swine. Sound like a swine, don't it? Mm -hmm. Huh? So we see that. We see all of this. We we won't we won't go, we won't look. We won't dare go into the wolf, go into the woods to hunt a wolf, especially not no Negro. Yes. But we hang around wolves and sheep clothing all day. Yes. You see that? Like once you start bringing this full fledged, I bet you won't play dead where vultures at. But you hang around vultures, people that do nothing but take and take and take from you. So we we follow the dietary law in Leviticus, but we totally is just throwing a blind eye to the one that's in Genesis three. Mm -hmm. Huh? It's time. See, today we finna put both of these together. Because they must go together. Because didn't that dietary law that started in the garden, didn't that come before the Levitical priesthood? How do y'all think it was made? And that's the whole point of this lesson. It's showing you to starve out the beast that's within and stop feeding it. Because when you feed a dog, a stray dog, it always come back. Once you feed it once, it's always come back and know where you at. It's at your door every day, crying and whining. Next thing you know, that puppy become a bit dog. Then you stop feeding and guess what? It eats your ass. Huh? And this is what we're doing whenever we feed ego, whenever we feed the appetite of the beast, whenever we feed flesh, whenever we feed this beast within. Come on, gang. Verse four again. <clears throat> Labor not to be rich. Mm -hmm. Cease from thine own wisdom. You see that? Cease from thy own wisdom. <clears throat> huh? Cease from that. Me, 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 me and the queen, we had a real long discussion about worldly wisdom and the wisdom of man and flattering tongues and speaking speaking of all these big scientific words and at the end of the day it says your work was in vain paul said i come to you humble i come to you with meek words i come to you basically with the fewest words to gain understanding for you can see the power of yah i didn't come with the beastly nature trying to be seen the man trying to sound good and look good you see that so we need to be having that wisdom and when you get down to the basis of that of that wisdom you will see you will see that a, a, a cat in the, in the jungle eat what a cat eat, and the gorilla in the jungle eats what the gorilla eat. You will never see a gorilla eat no meat, and you will never see a cat eat no herb. You don't see lions eating herbs. They eat flesh. You won't see a gorilla eat no flesh. They eat herbs and bananas and stuff. Why don't we do the same thing when it comes to the spiritual realm and when it comes to our spiritual bodies? We eat whatever we want to eat, and we have a spiritual dietary law, and it's in the book of Genesis. I'm not even talking about Leviticus yet, y'all. But you see, everything that's applied to you in the spirit must and must be manifest in the physical realm. That's the reason for Leviticus, y'all. And we're gonna we gonna really talk about dietary law, your diet, and you digest everything that's around you. So if you're not eating pig, but you're hanging around pig niggas, then guess what? You're still eating what, y'all? Pig. Let's let's keep it a thousand. Come on. Verse five. Will thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. You see that? For riches certainly make <clears throat> themselves wings and they fly off on you. You see that? You it comes and go. You chasing a check, but the check, soon as you get money, it grow wings and leave. Mm -hmm. That's why you chasing it. Come on. They fly away as an eagle Ooh. toward heaven. You see that? So we all worry about the money. We all worry trying to feed the beast. The reason why you want money is for materialism things anyway, to feed the beast within. It says, soon as you start chasing that check, that check grow wings. Mm, come on. Verse 6. Eat thou not the bread 
of him that hath an evil eye. You see that? Eat not the bread of him that have an evil eye. You look this word up, it's the eye of the mind. It's the seat to the soul, the seat to appetite. Don't eat with somebody with a actual evil mindset. Why break bread with the evil? Because if you eat what they give you, then what? You become a part of that. You are what you eat. Literally, y'all. Literally. This is why she could not eat of the tree, knowledge, good, and evil. It would have been a different if it was a tree of knowledge, good. What was, what was wrong about the tree? And evil. <laughs> huh? Of every tree you can take counsel from. Don't touch that tree. But that beast inside of her was, it, she had desire, her appetite. It said she looked upon it. It was good. She lusted for it. She just had to have a bite because she wanted that beast to be filled with knowledge. She wanted to be like God. And guess what actually, guess what talked her into it? The beast that we call what? The serpent. You look up the word serpent, it's a snake, a backstabber. Huh? Do Who want to hang around a snake, Negro? Who want that? Who want that all up in them and around them? Not me. Huh? Who want a pig around them? I don't eat pig, but I'm hanging around pigs. Gluttonous. Huh? I don't eat snake. It tell me don't eat snake in Leviticus. I can't eat nothing that actually do, do eggs like that, but I'm hanging around snake niggas. No. Huh? I, I'm a sheep. I don't like I don't be with the wolves, but I got wolves around me and sheep clothing. See, like once you really start going into this diet and you apply it spiritually to yourself, it lets you know how far back and how much we have failed as mankind. Come on, King. Verse six again. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, Ooh. neither desire thou his dainty meat. You see that? Do not desire his dainty meats. Do not desire his meat, y'all. You see that? I don't want it. Yeah, it look good, but I can starve the beast today. Remember he said in verse one, I think, no, verse three, it says, look, put a knife to your throat. Put a knife to your throat. If you given over to what? Appetite. Huh? Come on. Verse seven. For as he thinketh in his heart, Ooh. so he is. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So <clears throat> guess what? Now, if you think like a pig, you act like a pig. You eat everything. You can't stop eating. You don't know how to fast. You don't know how to starve the beast out. You hang around pig Negroes. Guess what that make you? According to scripture, it makes you a swine. Now, is we supposed to be eating swine according to scripture in Leviticus 11 and 7? No. No. Wait till we get into this dietary law and really break it down metaphysically. It's deep. It's a reason why I had to have a split, split hub, split calves. All these things mean something. Those that chew it up the cod. This stuff means something. This is like symbolic for spiritual stuff. But we too much of a physical people now. We have been sit so low that we don't even apply none of this spiritually. And I'm speaking for self too. It's time for all of us to start applying the knowledge instead of learning, reading all these books, and then we don't apply none of this to our lives. Huh? It shouldn't be no way you in this Bible every day, day in, day out, having the same cycle of trouble. Same cycle. Obviously, your diet is wrong. And I'm not talking about what's going down your throat. Your diet is wrong. I'm talking about the appetite of your mind. Instead of feeding the spirit mind, instead of feeding the Christ within, instead of feeding the God mind, the temple, you're feeding the beast. And the beast is in the belly. Truth be told, man, we don't believe. Yep, we don't believe when it comes down to it, we, we are doubtful. It's, it's ain't, no, ain't no gray area, man. It's just like either you believe or you don't. It's just like you keep feeding it. It's like you don't believe. Mm -hmm. Christ showed us, man, like, hey, believe in yourself, but keep the faith in the Father. Mm -hmm. You sure right about that, King. Real for it. Let's keep going. You finish it off that. <clears throat> Verse 7, again, for as he thinketh in his heart, so oh, he is. is. Oh, look, hey, look, Queen know who I am, said a mistake made more than once is a decision. You sure right about that. How many bad decisions we make, boy, <laughs> daily. It's mind blowing. Right. Come on. For as he thinketh in his heart, so he is. Mm -hmm. Eat and drink, said, said he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. See that? His heart is not with thee. You done with that, right? Verse 8. Uh-huh. The morsel which thou hast eaten shall thou vomit up Ooh. and lose thy sweet words. Uh -huh. That's the end of and lose thy sweet words. All right, from there, let's do this Matthew. Matthew 5, 29 to 30. Just to back up <clears> what he's saying here. Saying, because look, when he said put a knife to the throat, that was a warning. He said cut it off. If it offend your soul, cut it off. 
even even the disciples were subjected to this same type of discipline when it came to spiritual appetite. So I want to go to Matthew 5, start it at 29 and read it to uh, 30. 30. Yeah. Let me know when y'all there. Type in y'all nines. Hey, Queen, can you give me a headband or something? Type in y'all nines when y'all get there. We're going to get it started, family. Waiting on y'all. We're going, we going to the book of Matthew, chapter 5, 29 and 30. People, turn that air down to come on. Use that word. Turn that air down to come on right there. Turn it down to the click. All right, let's get it. We got our nine. Matthew chapter 5, verse 29. Uh -huh. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out. You see that? If your right eye offend thee, pluck it out. See, this is how stream it comes to get into the kingdom of God. You see that? It said, if your right eye offend thee, pluck it out. That is a stream. That's very extreme. That means what are you willing to lose to gain the kingdom? What are you willing to lose to gain your soul? It said a man might lose his life, but he gained what? His soul. One might gain, one might, one might gain his soul and what? Lose his life. Same thing. You see what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, when you weigh the option, which one is more important? Feeding the beast within or feeding the God mind, feeding the Messiah. Come on. And cast it from thee. You see that now not only pluck it up, but it said cast it away. Huh? That way, you don't grow legs and start walking back to you. Right. <laughs> Come on. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish. Come on. And not the whole body should be cast into hell. Mm. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off. See that? If your right hand offend thee, cut it off. This is extreme measure, y'all. Are you willing to go through this to get to the kingdom of God? Are you willing to go through this to level up your consciousness and your mindset? Huh? Many is not because people hate starving at beast because you really have become your body. You think you are your body when you're not. You are behind your body. You tell your body when you're hungry or not. You tell your body when you want to be by yourself or not. Why are you always surrounded by people, by things? And then it be around people and things that do nothing to help you out spiritually. Huh? They actually bring your spirit down. Yeah. When are we going to overcome this obstacle? Or are we going to keep giving in into the beast? But then you hear, bros, I ain't taking the mark of the beast, dog. It's to the casket drop. Nigga, you been took it. <laughs> look at look at what you eat now. Look at what you in subjection to now. The beast within. You are being you are being prepped and trained, brother, sister. Y'all being prepped and trained. Come on. Verse 30 again. Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, big brother Malachi Maccabee. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off uh -huh. and cast it from thee. Come on. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish. See that? So it's, it's profitable if one of the members perish and you still get the kingdom. Right. See that? He said, look, I'd rather get into the kingdom lane, huh? Walking with a limp, no arm, a mute, than to have all my limbs and have all my senses and be in the lake of fire. What good is that going to do me anyway if I'm burning for eternity? And these things are mindsets, y'all. Come on, gang. And not that the whole body should be cast into hell. Whew. Uh, we can stop there right there. So look, I want to do that. Then look, if you actually read chapter uh Daniel chapter one all the way to chapter six, it really get into it and the beast and how he changed the diet up and he didn't want to eat the swine and you know what I'm saying. And it, it's like when you start reading this book spiritually, it makes more sense. It makes a, a whole lot of more sense and it have it make you get it better too. So I want to get into the lesson. I just wanted to break those down. We actually finna get into the lesson, y'all. So I'm finna flip this screen because we got a lot of words to look up. Uh, we're going to start this off in Genesis chapter 1. We're going to start in the verse 20. Let me flip the screen. Type in y'all nines, not when y'all get there. Matter of fact, type in some sevens once y'all see my screen for I know that y'all see it. Share to everyone what present to everyone. Give me a second, y'all. Did I do it right? Let's, let's see it back. Uh, hold on, y'all. Ah, uh, yeah, I got it. I still got it, y'all. I ain't lost my touch. See, so y'all thought I lost my touch, didn't y'all? 
You launch my pad real quick. Oh, my Bible already up. Bang. All right. Once it's all the way flipped, let me know once y'all see the board. Let's get to this lesson. Remember, this lesson is called The Appetite of the Beast Within. We're going to start it off in Genesis chapter one, of course. All right. Everybody see the screen? I right, bet that. Bet that. All right. So look, we're in Genesis chapter one. We're going to start at verse 20, typing y'all nines once y'all get there. Having y'all nines once y'all get there. Remember, this is called the appetite of the beast within. Uh, these first two ver verses we went through, which was Proverbs and Matthews, we just painting the picture showing y'all that this beast is actually what? The appetite of what, y'all? The mind of the mind. Mm -hmm. All right, we got our nines. Let's get it done. All right, the book of Genesis, chapter 1, starting in verse 20. Uh-huh. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures uh -huh. that hath life. That have what? That hath life. Mm -hmm. And fowl that, that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. Come on. And God created great whales mm -hmm. and every living creature that moved it, which the waters brought forth abundantly. Which brought forth what? Abundantly. Uh -huh. After their kind. After what? Their kind. Come on. And every winged fowl after his kind. Uh -huh. And God saw that it was good. See, now in this particular sense, Yod Hey Wahe seen that this was good. He seen that this was good. So why do we turn good things bad? Do y'all realize that if, if you starve out the beast, this beast won't you the beast won't lead you. You actually lead the beast and it don't become a beast no more. See, in the beginning, when he made all these things, it was good. What happened? What turned things bad? Why can't you go to the jungle no more and chill with a lion? <laughs> huh? Really? Right, you bet not. Come on. <laughs> Verse 22. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the sea uh -huh. and let fire multiply in the earth. Come on. In the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Let's get into the sixth day. Come on. I and God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind. After what? After his kind. Come on. Cattle and creeping things and beasts and what and beasts and beasts. Now check this out, family. We finna look up this word beast. All right. The first concordance we're gonna go to is Hebrews two four one six. Check this out, family. Let me tap this real quick. Y'all see it on the right side of the board. All right. Y'all see it. All right. It says. It says kai. It says a lie. Hence raw flesh. Fresh. Plant, water, years, strong, also especially a feminine singular and masculine plural, life or living thing, literally, figurative, a lie, age. What they say, y'all? Appetite. appetite. We, we got to deal with that. That says appetite. Huh? So beast is what, y'all? Appetite. Oh, quick, raw, ruining, springing, troop. See the appetite. The beast is the appetite. The appetite been here since the beginning, but it wasn't checked until what? Adam and Eve in the garden. Adam and Eve in the garden. Let's keep reading. That way we can actually see what we supposed to be doing when it comes to this appetite of this beast that's within inside man. Let's keep reading, Hebrew. And beast of the earth after his kind. Uh -huh. And it was so. And what? And it was so. Come on. Verse 25. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. Uh -huh. And God saw that it was good. Come on. And God said, let us make man in our image. So we see the appetite was created. Now all of a sudden he creating uh, Adam, man, in his image and in his likeness, right? Now peep the instructions and the commands he gave to Adam over the beast, over the appetite. Check this out. Come on. Verse 26 again. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. Ooh, let them have what? Dominion. Let them have what? Dominion. Now check this out. Let's look up dominion before you even read the rest of it. Now look, all y'all, I'm sharing my screen with y'all. Y'all can look this stuff up, write it down for yourselves. All right. Dominion is radar. Radar. And it's, uh, it's Hebrew concordance. Write this down, family. H7. 287 h7287 and it says radar a primitive root to tread down 
to subjugate. See that? Especially to crumble all. Come to make, have dominion, prevail against. We supposed to prevail against what? The appetite, the beast, to reign. We supposed to reign over what, y'all? The appetite, the beast, to bear, to make, to rule, to overtake. Is y'all overtaking the beast or is y'all feeding the beast? Or y'all ruling the beast or is y'all feeding the beast? Or is the beast ruling y'all? See, because we see this beast is appetite. And whenever you feed the beast, you ultimately feed the flesh because the beast and the flesh is the same exact thing. When you look up the word beast, it says living flesh. So it, are we steady, constantly feeding the flesh, being subjected to our lower selves, giving in to our lower natures? huh? Or, or are we arising it? Are we starving this beast out? And we thinking Christ-like, thinking with our heads, not with our bodies, thinking with our minds, not with our bodies, not being soulish, but being spiritual. Which one are we doing? Come on. It says, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea Ooh. and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle mm -hmm. and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Come on. So God created man in his own image uh -huh. and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And the reason why he created man in his own image because the beast must die. The beast will not inherit the kingdom of God. And even if you start looking into the Proverbs and you go into the Psalms, you see that you see actually that these beasts, these beasts, once they die, that's it. They in the earth. They, they go to the earth and that's it. Same thing with your flesh. Once you die, your flesh go back to where? The dust, the ground. Then your consciousness go to a place, either Abraham's bosom or go into a place of torment and a waste of judgment. And then your spirit goes in the door of the Most High Yah. But your flesh goes into the ground. Same as what? The beast of the ground. Y'all see, look, this, this is how dope. Um, I don't even want to use the word dope. That's a drug. This is how magnificent the Bible is. You can read something physically and they have a total spiritual meaning to it. I mean, a total spiritual meaning. So now whenever y'all consciousness has been struck now, so whenever you read the word beast, you're not going to only think about a dog and a cat and a lion running around. You're going to be looking at your flesh like this is the beast. This is the beast. Now, this is the beast as we read. Oh, we. What is the mark of the beast? What is the mark of man? And it says the number was 600 and scoring six, which is 666. And how ironic that you have six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. Trons make up matter, matter make up flesh. Flesh make up skin. This, These are flesh, y'all. So even when you get into the mark, it still has something to do with the number of a man. Like, this is the stuff that don't nobody want to talk about. But we already subjecting ourselves and being trained and prep, prep for the mark of the beast because we constantly feeding the beast that's within inside of us. If y'all got some understanding, some overstanding, and some understanding so far, type in some nines. Just so far. That way we can keep going. If we got any questions, ask right now before we uh, keep getting into this lesson because I need to make sure we all on one accord. That way we ain't doing this whole lesson. There's people in the background that like, what the hell is y'all keep talking about? So if y'all got some understanding, some overstanding, and some understanding so far, type in some nines for me. And if anybody got a question concerning the lesson and what we're talking about right now, ask it real fast. So the flesh belongs to the beast. That's right. The flesh belongs to the beast. The flesh is the beast. Because remember, we was immortal beings. Wouldn't we create it in his image and after his likeness? See, we was wrapped in light. You start reading when you get in that Psalms, it talked about that we when he said, why does thou take, 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 uh, take thought in man? We were light beings. That's why we say shalom light beings or shalom daughter, daughters of light. Because we were light beings. See, when we put on immortal flesh in Genesis 3, chapter, Genesis chapter 3 and 21, which we finna read, that's when he gave them coats of what, y'all? Coats of skin. That's when he gave them coats of skin. Because we sin. Uh, I ain't bring mine. Quinn, you got a book of Jasher? here? Uh, would you come get it real fast? See, that's when you put on the coats of skin. You see how deep this go, y'all? Nine, endure against the appetite. Yes, family, endure against the appetite. The Bible is a spiritual and physical always. That's right, Nehemiah. That's right, Nakamya. Most definitely. 
I ask because the Kemet belief represents the 666. No, 66, even if the Kemet, even if com the Kemetrian science come from the Bible, Abraham taught them that science. So even if that does, they got it from Abraham, they got it from my Bible anyway, because 666 is actually in our Bible. That was the number of the beast of man when you read in Revelation. So they ain't doing nothing but taking our knowledge anyway. See, what Abraham did was, he was a he was a Melchizedek priest when he went on his journey and he crossed over the Euphrates rivers and he went into the land of Egypt. He brought them a Melchizedek priestly science, it, it, the, the hidden uh, the hidden mysteries, and he taught it to them and he got wages. They paid him for his knowledge and they, they blessed him. And that's why when he left Egypt, he left a very rich man. See what Abraham was doing. Abraham was going around setting up altars and setting up Melchizedek priest schools. That's what he was doing. Setting up priests, not priests, but priest schools. And this is where all this knowledge around the world come from. That's why when you read about Buddha, it sounds like Christ. When you read about Osiris, it sounds like Christ. When you read about uh, Muhammad, it sounds like Christ. When you read about Mamadan, it sounds like Christ. That's why it's a flood in every religion. That's why it's giants in every religion. All this stuff just didn't happen across the world for no reason, and the names are different. Abraham went around teaching this Melchizedek sacred knowledge, and everybody took beasts, bits and pieces of it and fed the beast and then came up with their own sets of religion. So, yeah, but yeah, can it probably talk about it, but everybody talk about this. All this stuff comes from Abraham. All this stuff comes from the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes, or what we a.k.a. call the meat suit. <laughs> That's right. That's how you know they've been listening to our lessons for a long time. The right. meat suit. <laughs> we are spiritual beings and fleshly bodies. Yes, we are spiritual beings having a human experience. That's right. All right, come on. Let's get back to the scripture. All right, Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the Ooh, earth. And replenish the earth. Come on. And subdue it. And what? Subdue it. Keep it. Subdue it. Come on. And have dominion over the fish of the sea. Over the beast of the sea. Come on. Over the fowl of the air. Over the beast of the air. Come on. And over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So we supposed to have dominion over the beast physically and spiritually. Yes. Get your dominion over the flesh back. That's the whole point of this. Because do y'all know the kingdom of God, that cube-like structure that, that, they, that they call the tetrahedron or I'm not going to even get into scientific names. I'm going to keep it simple. But all these things that they call Jerusalem that's going to descend from the heavens, y'all realize that's the Garden of Eden, right? We're going back to the Garden of Eden. We're going back to the Garden of Eden, family. Yes, and we're going back to the diet, too. And I know a lot of people don't want to hear about that, but yes, we are. <laughs> and these are facts, family. All right, so from there, I want to do Genesis 3. We're going to Genesis chapter 3. We're going to read this whole chapter and break it down. This is mind-blowing once you really get into it. And we're going to go back and forth. And then we're going to show that whenever it's talk about a snake in the Bible, it was bad. Whenever it talks about a mice in the Bible, it was bad. Whenever it talks about swine, wolves, it was bad. Only thing that I seen that had a good and bad meaning was the goats. That's the only thing. Other than that, if you read about the foul birds, it was talking about it in a bad sense. So why would you want to surround yourself around there and break bread with a snake, with a mouse, which is a snitch, with a snake, which is a, a hisser, somebody that, that does things behind your back, a creeper, swine, which is a gluttony pig. Nobody want to be around no pig. I sure don't want to go out to eat with you. You eat whatever. With a wolf that disguise themselves as a sheep. These are bad things, and these are things that we can't even eat on the Leviticus dietary law. So why are we eating them spiritually? Why are we hanging ourselves around them? Why are, why do we have these bad dietary laws in our company anyway? Huh? I can't eat no pig, so get your pig ass from away from me. Why we don't do that spiritually? Because we look at everything physically. All right, come on with it. We're going to do Genesis chapter 3. We're going to read this whole chapter, y'all. We're going to get into that uh, dietary law and the Levi. And look, that, that Leviticus, boy, it is some daggers in there, ain't it, Uriel? Once you break down the Leviticus spiritually, oh, it is mind-blowing. You would see that the, the dietary law was uh, spiritual way before it came physical. Way before it came physical. All right, let's get it done. Well, Type in y'all nines once y'all get there. I don't see no nines yet. The thing is, the order of Aaron was showing us the, the middle physical side of uh, life. Of McKelvey's Straight up. Okay. Straight up. It was a schoolmaster. My schoolmaster. That's what it is. Let me know. All right, we got our nines. Let's get it. Let's get it done. Genesis chapter three, verse one. Hey, y'all should really. Shalom, Seraphina Queen. I ain't seen you in a while. How you been? 
yeah, look, y'all should really, really like get into uh, y'all notes and write this stuff down. It's gonna get deep, y'all. It really is, especially once you get into this obedience over sacrifice for life. That's right. That's right. Come on with it. And look, notice the sacrifice when you get into the sacrificial law. What were we sacrificing, y'all? Beast. <laughs> like all of that was caused. All of that was a forecoming of the sacrificial law of the flesh, which Christ came in the flesh to be that fleshly sacrifice, and that's why He put on our sin. Same way that they used to put the sins all into the pig and let the pig and the wild she go run through the uh, wilderness. All this has something to do with the beast and the appetite within man. All this has something to do with what's going on inside of your spiritual body. Hey, go to uh, Exodus 15, 15. Just show them. All right, we're going to show y'all something real quick. Exodus 15 and 15. Real quick, my bad. I ain't trying to get off topic. We more on topic. We just want to go ahead and read it. Yeah, go ahead and read that real quick. Uh, Exodus, Exodus chapter 15, verse 15. Then the dukes of Edom shall be amazed. The mighty men of Moab. Yeah, click on mighty man. All right, let's click on mighty man. We clicking on mighty man. Mighty man of Moab. Uh, you got yes, to click okay. it. Ain't going to let me do it. I'm okay. Sure. Well, this uh, H352. The first, it says ram. It said ram is food. Ram is sacrifice. Ram is skin dad from the tabernacle. Ooh. Pillar, door, post, jam. And look, look down at uh, three, it says mighty man or leader. Ooh, see that? So if you see, if you even look up the word, read that one more time. It's uh, H352. It's Aiel. It says ram. Ram is food. Ram is sacrifice. Ram, skin, dad, red for tabernacle. And then you look at three, it says a strong man, a leader, or a chief. So you see what a ram is. It's actually talking about ram being man. You see that? It's talking about ram being a man. Man, where did my, uh, give me one second, y'all. got some technical difficulties going on here. Hey, man, where, where did my hangout go? My Google hangout. That deal just left or something. I'll figure that out later. Let's keep it. Let's keep it going. I'm still on or am I off, y'all? Hey, check and see if I'm still on. Type in some nines if y'all still see me or, or hear me. What just happened, man? So this watching you answer. Am I still on? You got a nine right there. You just typed in a nine. Okay, I'm still on. Okay. Man, what is going on? All right, anyways, we'll worry about that later. All right, now we back in Genesis 3. All right, let's get it done, y'all. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Ooh! Oh, it started off with daggers. So now that we got the understanding what beast is, it says now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to look up this word serpent. All right. Now, if you look up the word serpent, all right, it comes from the Hebrew word nakash. Now, if y'all know, if we keep going down, it's going to tell you an enchanter, a light beam. It's going to go into things. You see that it wasn't an actual snake, but it was talking about the characteristics of him was like a snake. So it says a snake from its hiss, a serpent. You see that? So now we got a snake. Y'all know what snakes are. He's a snake. He's a backstabber. Where you think these words come from? Then it says beast. Now, the serpent was more smarter than any beast. Show you that the serpent was what, y'all? A Beast, beast, comes back to that same word, appetite, alive. You see it? Appetite. Now let's go back to serpent. So read that verse real quick. Verse one again. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Uh huh. And he said unto the woman, Yeah, have God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now see, that's the thing with this beast, what this fresh fleshly beast does. With this beast within, the appetite, it, it gets you to call out the commandments before you break them. You see how flesh work? Huh? So before you commit that sinful act, it calls it out first. Didn't God tell you you better not do that? Huh? Didn't the Christ come to say you better not do that? But nigga, I know you hungry. You know? I know you want to eat. Huh? I know you want to eat. See, that's a backstabber. That's a serpent. Come on. Verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, uh -huh. but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it. Ooh. Neither shall you touch it, mm -hmm. lest you die. You see that? 
Neither shall you touch it yes you, unless you die. And we see in the Levitical law, it's certain things that die and you can't touch them either. Don't reread that. You So you're going to start seeing things and linking this up with the actual dietary law and, and the actual uh, Leviticus law and the dietary law. So once you start linking this stuff up, you see where the Levitical law came from. It came up out of this Mechelzedek dietary law that we read about in Genesis. Come on, King. Verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Oh, you see that? First mistake. Why we don't read this and peep what's going on? So just let you know that the appetite of the beast within, for it to feed its appetite, it will lie to you. Showing you that your flesh would do what, y'all? Your flesh will lie to you. It will deceive you. Is, is we reading this, y'all? Right? So look, that's the first thing that the flesh or the beast would do for its appetite within. So write that down. That's the first thing it does. It will lie to you. It will trick you. It will deceive you. It will beguile you, seduce you. Right? Come on. Verse 5. But God doeth not know that in the day, no, take the new stuff that over, family. But God doeth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open. Oh, you see that? Then your eyes shall be open. Now you're seeing that Eve wanted her eyes open. She wanted to be like God, and this is what brought the beast in the first place. Y'all see that? See, by you wanting to be prideful, by you wanting to be high and mighty, by you seeking knowledge above and worldly wisdom, by you seeking self, this is where self and ego creates the beast, and that same beast needs to be fed. So he lied to you, and he deceived your Christ-like mind, and he deceived you, and let you feed him, and then it grows and it consumes you. Y'all see that? This is the reason why we must actually starve this beast out. This is the reason why we must watch our appetite, family. Remember what it said when we read the Proverbs 23? It said, put a knife to your throat if you a man given to what? Appetite. Do y'all see how all of this is lining up? Ooh we Let's keep going. Continue verse 5. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Come on. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. You see that? She saw it was good for food. It was delicious. It looked it lustful. She seduced. She's turned on about it. Come on. And that it was pleasant to the eyes. See that it was pleasant. Pleasant and pleasant and pleasure come from the same words. Y'all know that, right? So what's going on here? This sounds like the lust of the eyes, the lust of the world. Huh? The lust of the beast. See that? See, the beast, his appetite is sinful thing. It wants you to get full. It wants you to, it wants you to, ooh, what's that, that beast? Look, that beast a nasty creature too. Because think about a beastly nature. All they want to do is have sex, eat, sleep, and shelter. Reptilian mindset, the reptile brain. That's all it thinks about is humping, pleasure. It don't have nothing to do with feeding your spirit. Nothing. Have nothing to do with feeding your spirit. Show me one time where flesh was good for the spirit. If we read in Galatians 5, didn't it say that they was contrary to one another? They are straight enemies. So we know that the beast within and its appetite is enemy to us, but why we keep feeding it then? Huh? Why do you keep feeding that beast? Why do you keep going against the first dietary law that was in the Garden of Eden? Come on. Verse 6 again. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired. And a what? A tree to be desired. See that? It's a tree to be desired. See that? She desired that. And this is what created the beast. Your lustful ways create the beast. Your lustful ways. Come on. Desire and, ooh, to and look, that just, let, that just really lets you know. That just really, really lets you know that once you actually... The mark of the beast. It says that whoever do not take this mark cannot buy, sell, or trade. You get none of these material things. You can't eat. You can't feed the beast unless you take his mark. That's even further goes to, to prove the point we're trying to make here. You know what I'm saying? That it physically and spiritually, it's the same exact thing, man. All right, come on with it. Verse 6 again, fam. Hey, if y'all if still can hear me typing some sevens. Okay. Okay, I'm back. Where we at, fam? All right, my guy, El Bani, it's real. We still on. We in Genesis chapter 3. What verse we at, King? Six. We at verse 6. I just need to know we on because I can't find my Google Hangout. It's The computer swallowed it. The beast swallowed it. The beast and devoured it. There's something, something's going on there. All right, let's see. All right, let's, let's, get All right. let's get it. Let's get it. Verse 6 again. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes 
and it a tree to be desired to make one wise. Ooh, to be desired to make one wise. Didn't it say refrain from worldly wisdom? See, look, that Proverbs 23, 1 through 8, it's daggers all throughout there, y'all. Make sure y'all go back through this lesson and really read that slow. Come on. She took of the fruit thereof. She said she took of the fruit thereof after, after she told the beast. She told her flesh. She said, look, Yahweh's father told me I couldn't eat this tree. After the conscience. After the conscience. Boy, that's, she still did it. So what do this mean? This means that you are an enemy of God at this point. Then that means that your belly became your what? God. God. Your belly became your God. Matter of fact, we're going to read. Let's, let's, let's finish off this verse, and we're going to jump back and forth real quick. Finish that verse off. We're and gonna did go he? To, uh, we're going to go to, uh, what is that? Is that Philippians 3 and 19? I think it's Philippians 3 and 19. And did he? And did what? And did he? So we see that the beast overruled. He overrided her consciousness, and it got to feed his pleasure and appetite. And because of her, we all what? We all die. Because of that, we all die. See, this show you that feeding that beast bring upon death and corruption, and it puts you in flesh. Don't nobody want to be in coat skins of flesh? I hate this flesh, y'all. Corrupted mm -hmm. counsel. Yes, that is what's going on. Read that Philippians 3 and 19 real fast. All right, Philippians chapter 3, verse 19. Whose end is destruction. You see that? Whose ends? He's talking about wicked people. Whose ends is destruction. Come on. Whose God is their belly. Who God is their bellies. We got to watch out for those. And we see when it came to Eve inside of the garden that her belly was her God. And her flesh represented the serpent, which was Satan, to get her to get into Hashatan. You see that? You see what's really going on? So when you read Genesis 3, yes, this physically happened, but this is a whole spiritual story that's going on here that you must apply to yourself metaphysically to get the jewels that it's really talking about her. Come on. Um, and whose glory is in their shame. You see that? Whose glory is in their shame, whose glory is in their self. They reward evil for good. You can just read that, 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 uh, read that verse. Okay. Who mind earthly things. Who what? Mind earthly things. Who mind earthly things. They're not worried about the things that's above. Now, see, we're getting into this, this, this spiritual realm, and we're getting into this spiritual understanding of the serpent. So what verse did we leave off on? Six. All right, we're going to stop this at verse six. We're coming back to it. I want to go show y'all the characteristics of snakes, y'all, and show you this is why we're not supposed to be eating snakes and reptiles. That's, that's, that's totally against the, 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 the Levitical law, the dietary law in Leviticus, and it's totally against the dietary law that's in Genesis that was in the garden. And we're going to go and read the actual characteristics of the snakes, and it shows you that you're not supposed to be eating them physically, nor hang around people that have the characteristics of them. We don't hang around snake Negroes, and we don't eat snakes. But you go down to Alabama and Arkansas and uh, in Louisiana, that's all they eat. And notice they act like the things that they eat. So I want to go to, uh, let me, let's go to Psalms. I want to go to Psalms 58, y'all. Psalms 58 and 4. And uh, I need Psalms 140 and 3. We got some quick hitters, y'all. Overstanding, all praises. All right, we're going to go to the book of Psalms. 140 and 3. Yep, 140 and 3. I'm going to put it on the board for y'all can see this, family. Psalms 140 and 3. All right, we got Psalms 140. Give me a second, family. Birds together. Bird, yeah, birds of a feather flock together. You all who you hang around. I don't care what you're talking about. And unless you're in a spiritual sense where you don't get in, like the Messiah and like a, a few brothers I know, we we hang around people to bring them into the truth, not to be like them. So, you know what I'm saying? But that's that's a whole other conversation and topic that I ain't going to even get into. So we had Psalms 140. We're going to read one through three. Come on, okay. All right. Uh, Talk to y'all nines once y'all get there. Psalms 140. We're going to read one. Through three. That's right, my queen. You are what you eat. Serve it on a plate for you. <laughs> Y'all crave. That's why the world focuses on operating the reptilian portion of the human brain. That's right, Sister Odell. You already know. That's right. That's right. Don't, don't get me to speaking scientifically up in here. Y'all know that's my niche. <laughs> All right. We the book of Psalms 141 to 3. All right, the book of Psalms, chapter 140, verse 1. Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. You see that? Deliver me from the evil man. Come on. Preserve me from the violent man. Ooh, preserve me from the violent man. See, Paul, uh, Saul, I mean, I saw, but David, King David was at war. So it was a lot of enemies he had that was trying to kill him. 
So he always was praying that the Lord to keep him safe. Now look at what he called this evil man though. Look at what he characterized that man as. Look at the characteristics that he's talking about. Come on. Which imagine mischief in their heart. Uh -huh. Continually are they gathered together for war. Come on. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Ooh, they did what? Sharpened their tongues like a serpent. You see that? They snakes. They backbiters. They hissers. They, they go around and they hiss. They whisper about how they're going to plot to kill him. But he said, in the midst of my enemies, I built a table. But notice the characteristics of his enemies. He called them serpents. Didn't Christ call the Pharisees vipers and, vipers and serpents? Mm -hmm. See, so we see that we're not supposed to be around Pharisees. Them niggas are snakes. They, they are no better than the snake that was in the Garden of Eden. And this is why in the dietary law, in the Levitical law, you ain't supposed to eat what? Snakes. Don't do this make sense. If this makes sense so far, type me in some sevens and we can keep going. This is my word. Type me in some sevens, but we can keep going. Most definitely. Type me in some sevens. If we, if we got some understanding, some understanding and some overstanding. All right, we good. We got the sevens. Come on, let's, let's re, re verse three again. Start it from the beginning. It says, they have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Uh -huh. Adder's poison is under their lips. Ooh, you see that? It's under their lips. So we see people that have slick talkers, people that whisper and, and, and whisper and start war and mischief. These are what we call snake niggas. I'm speaking in a, uh, <laughs> a, 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 a STL, STL Israelite term. We call them snake niggas. You see that? We don't want to be around no snakes. We don't hang around snakes, do we? So why eat them? See that? Eve should have peeped that in the garden and be like, if you don't get your snake butt out of here, I don't mess with snakes because they deceitful. All right, let's do a couple more. Let's do Psalms 140. Psalms 140. I mean, uh, Psalms 58. yeah, Psalms 58 and 4. Yep, Psalms 58, 1 through 4. Yep, 1 through 4. All right. Hold on. Let, get there, family. Type in y'all sevens. We in Psalms 58, 1 through 4. Let's get her done. Type in y'all nines once y'all get there. Let's get her done. I know people who eat alligator. Uh huh. Alligator eat you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Can y'all believe they used to feed our babies to them, man? They used to feed our babies to these beasts. Beast feeding baby to beast. That's what was going on. All right, let's get it. All right, Psalms 58, verse 1. Uh -huh. Do ye indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do ye judge uprightly, O ye sons of me? Oh, so no, now we know who David's talking about. He's talking to who? The congregation of Israel, right? Now, peep what he say about this congregation, family. Oh, my God. Come on. Verse 2. Yeah, in heart ye work wickedness. See that in mindset, when, when it comes to that beast, you work wickedness. Y'all y'all acting like y'all a righteous congregation. It's all wickedness going out through this congregation. Come on. Ye weigh the violence of your hands Ooh. in the earth. Ooh, come on. Verse 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. You see that? Come on. They go astray as soon as they be born. Speaking what? Speaking lies. We call one speaking lies snake tongues, vipers, Pharisees. Check this out. Verse 4. Verse 4. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. There we go. Calling niggas serpents again. Snakes. The same snake that was in the garden. Lying and whispering and hissing his poison to Eve. And because of this, we all die. Come on. They are, they are like the deaf adder. That stoppeth her ears. Ooh, that stoppeth her ears. That's enough for that. Let's go back to Genesis, and we're going to keep it going. Let's go back to Genesis, family. We're going to go back to Genesis, and we're going to keep this story going. Genesis chapter 3, we left off at verse 6, I believe, right, King? All right, let's get back. Once y'all get back to the Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, type in y'all nines, and we're going to keep this lesson pushing. Okay, I'll pray, I'll pray. Type in y'all nines. All right, we there. Let's get her done. Genesis chapter 3, verse 7. And the eyes of them both were open. Uh-huh. 
and they knew that they were naked. You see that? And they seen that they were naked, and they realized it was a beast within them. They say, dang, we naked. Huh? Come on. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they made themselves aprons. Look at this word, aprons. Aprons. It says a belt for the waist. <laughs> what are you covering up your waist area for? What went down there? Huh? It says apron, a girdle, armor. It's to carry, it's to actually cover up your middle region. So if, if sex went in the garden, why are they covering up their sexual organs? That's a question I gotta ask. We did a lesson called uh the apple deception. Make sure y'all watch that. It shows you what really took place in that garden. You see that? Come on, King. Verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Right. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. See that all this came from eating. So can we say that they actually broke a direct commandment of dietary law in the Garden of Eden before there was ever a Levitical priest dietary law? Did they or did they not break a dietary law? And because of that, we all die. Did they or did they not? Huh? Did they or did they not? Come on. Verse 9. <clears throat> and the Lord God called to Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Ooh. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. Yeah, I was afraid because I gave in to the beast. And I hid myself. And he hid himself. Come on. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? As thou eaten of the tree, Ooh. whereof I commanded thee, that thou shouldest not eat. So we see a commandment of eating in the beginning, y'all. And we see that he broke that. Now, did she eat the serpent? No. The serpent represented the beast that was in her, and it had an appetite. The appetite was to lay down and have sex with Hashatan to get knowledge. See, Satan wanted to get to know her. Huh? What y'all think it mean when a nigga say they want to get to know you? Huh? What y'all think that mean? Didn't it say that Joseph knew not Mary? <laughs> Meaning they didn't what? Have sex. That's why we believe in the virgin birth, because scripture talks about a virgin birth. Huh? And Joseph knew her not. Just, just like, yeah, just like uh with Adam birth. Huh? It says for, for there wasn't a man to till the ground. So we see when you get into this knowledge of knowing, and the short part of knowledge is to know the ledge. This is where knowledge comes from. It comes from an ancient Phoenician Sumerian tongue. It means knowledge means to know the ledge. All this has to do with tubal cane and mason building. And wisdom comes from wide dome. A wide dome is what they build in the uh, cathedral hills. They built wide dome and they knew the ledge. So we call these people wisdom and knowledge. See, this has something to do with building and intellect. This go back to the priestlyhood. Like once you really start getting into all of this stuff, it goes, the rabbit hole goes very deep, y'all. And we see that your diet is very important and your appetite must be tamed. Your appetite, you must have discipline when it comes to your appetite. Because if you will eat a pig, that means you will hang around a pig Negro. Huh? If you will eat a mouse, that means you will hang around a mouse and you are what you eat. You eat these things, you become a snake. You become a mouse, a snitch, a snake, a backstabber. You become a swine, a pig, a glutton, punk. You become a... I want, to, I want to say a cuss word. I ain't going to say no cuss word. You become a wolf in sheep clothing. You see how all of this coincide with one another? Makes sense. Makes sense. So watch your diet spiritually. Watch your diet spiritually and physically and watch your surroundings. Watch who you keep company with. All right, come on, King. Who was, where was he at? Let's get it done. Right. Verse 10. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Ooh, come on. Verse 11. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? As thou eat another tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat. Mm -hmm. And the man said, the woman whom, the, whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Come on. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me. You see that? The beast within me beguiled me. My flesh within me beguiled me. My carnal mind beguiled me. See, look, this is what I'm trying to show y'all. This carnal mind been around since the beginning getting niggas. Huh? We've been falling from the carnal mind since the beginning of time. 
You, you do you see this, y'all? So watch who you hang around. Watch. Oh, she said, "Look, you are spiritually malnourished." And hey, she coming with the words today. Hey, <laughs> that's right, Queen. And she coming with them saying, and just let you know, I'm jacking everything you saying today. I'm gonna use it for one of my next letters. Hey, I'm gonna start saying that you no, spiritually please. malnourished, my brother. <laughs> you real said he using some of these for his poems. <laughs> hey, straight up. Hey, come on, okay. Verse thirteen. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is it that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent. Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle. Ooh, you see that? Since you have done this, you're going to be lesser than the beast that you are. Because remember, he was the most subtle or the most smartest thing. He was the most clever and cunning thing above all the other beasts. That's why he really represented that fleshly nature. Now he put him lower. So, so when you give in to the beast now, that means you literally have to lower the hell out of your standards to even give in to the flesh. Because didn't he, didn't he curse them above all the beasts of the field? So to even to even give in to the reptilian brain, to even give in to, to this serpent-like nature, you literally have to, you have to stoop so low. <laughs> you have to stoop lower of the lowest. You see that? Come on. So he put them on uh, the ground. Yeah. He put them on the air. Yeah, most definitely. Come on with it. It says, uh, verse 13 again, and the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast, oh, I'm sorry, fam. Verse 14, it says, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Come on. Upon thy belly thou shalt go, uh -huh. and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Uh -huh. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. So look, you see, so at first it was war amongst the angels, it was war in the heaven. But when this bad dieting came in and they, they broke the commandment and gave in into the appetite of the beast within, that brought war word into the earth. Y'all see that? All this war came into the earth and death came into the earth because we gave in into appetite of the beast within. This is how crucial and this is how important your appetite is and this is why a disciple must have discipline. Huh? A god and a goddess must have discipline. Kings and queens must have discipline. If you plan on getting to the kingdom of God, you have to have discipline, y'all. And we all lack discipline. And if we didn't, we wouldn't be here teaching this lesson. Meaning we all lack this very discipline. But we point fingers and talk about everybody else for the same bad appetite, Negro, that you got. Hypocrites. Hypocrites. Vipers. Serpents. Phariseeism. Narcissistic mindset. That's the beast. So that's why it's psychological locks, man. Yeah. That's what it is. Psychological locks, most definitely. Come on with it. Verse 15 again. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and mm -hmm. between thy seed and her seed. Ooh. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his head. Now look at all this pain just coming from giving it to appetite. Just like that pork. Yeah, y'all, it, it smell like shit to me. And I, my bad for cussing, but I'm going to tell y'all the truth. Pork smell like shit when I when I smell it on the grill. It smells like shit, but it, it's to, to most people it smells good. It looks good. Y'all put honey glaze on it, huh? <laughs> honey glaze. Honey glaze. Yeah. Soon as you eat that pork and it goes to that belly, you get parasites from it. Hook worms, snake. Uh, hook worms, sink worm, brain worm. Huh? It causes high blood pressure. Shut down your kidney and your liver. Gives you bad acne, and your boo boo smell stinks to high heaven. So, yes, it looks good, and it's so-called smell good, but as soon as you eat it, it kills your entire body. Now your body is ru run by parasites. Same thing that happened to Eve when she ate of that tree and when she wasn't supposed to. As soon as she ate from it, she died that day. Adam died that day. We still died that day. No one has lived a thousand years because of a bad appetite, showing that we must eat good. We must eat holistically. And what I mean by holistically, whole means the entire Meaning spiritually, physically, metaphysically, whatever y'all want to call it, all of our diets on each platform must be healthy. Must be healthy. And what are you doing it? Or are you living by that? Obviously, no, because we having this lesson. And I'm not talking to y'all, or just y'all, I'm talking to myself. The brothers are standing next to me, everybody. You see that? Like, look, judgment goes across the board. We ain't one-sided. We don't do one-sided stories. We hear both sides of the matter. And then, yes, rice adjustment. I'm telling you, we all off when it comes to this diet right here. 
And I ain't talking about putting nothing in your mouth. I'm talking about spiritually and mentally. When are we going to start feeding ourselves spiritual food and stop feeding this damn beast? Come on. Verse 16 again. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Ooh. And sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. Ooh. And thy desire shall be to thy husband. Come on. And he shall rule over thee. Come on. And unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Curse is the ground for thy sake. Come on. And sorrow <laughs> shall You see that? Look, a bad diet cursed the ground, y'all. What you ate can cause effects on the earth, he family. He said because of you. He said because of you. Because of you. Because what you did. Huh? Because you chose to eat and, and disobey my orders. Come on. The curse is the ground for thy sake. And sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Woo. Thorns and thistles shall they bring forth to thee. You see that? Thorns and thistles came because of bad diet. Read that verse out. We're going to skip again. Verse 18 again. Huh? Thorns and thistles shall they bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. So look, we talked about the snake, right? Let's get into the mouse. I was just want let's talk about the mouse, y'all. Let's go to Isaiah 66, 17. And I think Isaiah 65 and 4, I believe. Am I off? And I think, don't quote me on it. I might be off. You're real going to find it for us. Isaiah 66 and 17 in Isaiah 65 and 4, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm on point. All right, let's get it. So, look, we're going to go to Isaiah 66 and 17 first. Remember, we're coming back to Genesis, y'all. Isaiah 66, 17. All the Hebrews should know this. This Hebrew one-on-one. -on -one, when you come into the faith, you... As soon as you want to go cut past the poke chop, this is what you bring to him. <laughs> Straight up. All right. We in the book of Isaiah chapter 66. We're going to read verse 17. Let's, let's talk about this stuff. So, look, we see that you ain't supposed to be eating mouse. And we're going to end this in Leviticus 11, y'all. We're going to end this with Levitic uh, Leviticus 11. But you see, you ain't supposed to be eating no mouse. So if you know you ain't supposed to be eating no mouse, which is billions of pounds of rat. Meat is in U.S. right now, and you eating and don't even know it. But look, why would you not eat mouse but hang around a rat, hang around a mouse, huh? Hang around a squiller. You know what mouse do? They squeal. Soon as they get in trouble, they tail and squeal. Squeal. They squeal. <laughs> That's why they go to jail. They call them mice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they call them. Yes. Why they call them? That's why they call them niggas rats? You a rat? You a snitch? You a squiller? Soon as you get in trouble, any type of affliction come, you scream to high heaven. You a mouse. Who want to be around a Negro like that? It's crazy how the word plays. The word plays. And it lines up with scripture. Yeah. God, Terry. Look, see, good. you get it. See, look, Ezra get it, y'all. I'm hoping and praying that y'all getting the same thing. Y'all see where the scripture is actually going. If, if Again, if y'all getting this picture and if everything coming together to y'all, type in some sevens for me. I came home from Catholic school. And from a dinner my mom made at a feet of plate with her hair still on it. I've never trusted her with my food. I was fine <laughs> smelling them chitterlings. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you, sure. <laughs> I feel you. Oh, man. <laughs> Y'all is crazy, man. Leanne, Shalom Queen. Shabbat Shalom Queen. How you doing? I mess with Le Leanne, man. She, she be coming with that knowledge, too. That's my sister right there. All right, come on with it. All right, uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 17. Howard Brown, Shalom, my Jamaican brother. All right, come on with it. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree. Ooh, now look, this is the dagger in this. <laughs> this is the dagger. So we're going back to the garden, which we just read in Genesis 3, right? So look, y'all, it says, those that sanctify themselves, sanctify means set themselves apart and purify themselves. They're cleansing themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst. If you go back to Genesis, the tree that was in the midst of the garden was the tree of knowledge, good and evil. Check out what he said this tree of knowledge, good and evil represents, y'all. Blind blown. This is how you know it wasn't a tree. It was a man with, boy, look, I'm going to let it speak for itself. Come on. <laughs> it says, verse 17 again. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree uh -huh. in the midst, 
eating swine's flesh. So we see that the in the midst of the garden was the tree of knowledge, good and evil, wasn't it? Huh? She hid behind a tree and she was in the midst. She wanted to set herself apart and be like God. She thought that this was going to actually cleanse her and raise her consciousness. Now, look, it said the tree was swine flesh. Swine is pig, right? So it shows you that Satan is a self-righteous pig. He's a gluttoning for pride. He's a gluttonous for pride. Do y'all see how the scripture links up? Come on. Eating swine's flesh and the abomination. And the abomination. Abomination is something that God hates. And what else? And the mouth. And the mouth. He's a gluttonous when it comes to pride, and he's a sneaky, squilling bastard. You see what he did in Job 1 and 7? He, he snuck up to the meeting of God. Well, I bet you Job won't stand. I bet you I can get him to curse the name of God. He's a squiller and a accuser. And a accuser. So he's a tattleteller, an accuser, and he's a gluttoning pig when it comes to pride. So we see what this is talking about. This is talking about man, y'all. This is talking about that beast that resides inside of man, and it's talking about the appetite of the beast that is within you. Do y'all see how deep this is? Do y'all see how deep this is? Eating human flesh, yes. And abomination is a metaphor of eating human flesh, which goes right back to what? The beast. See, y'all on board. I see y'all getting this all praises. Hallelujah. All right, did you finish it off? Uh, shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. See, all this going to be consumed together. Now we're going to do Isaiah. Isaiah 55, verse 4. 65, my bad, 65. Isaiah 65, verse 4. Then we're going to get back to Genesis. Yeah, starting verse 4. Yeah, starting off. Just starting verse 4. We can okay. one line either. Okay, cool. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 4. Which remain among the graves and lodge in the in the monuments. No, that ain't monuments. That is monuments. That's monuments. Yeah, monuments. Okay. All right. <laughs> let me start that over. <laughs> it says, "Which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments, which eat swine's flesh." You see that? Which eat swine flesh again? Come on. And broth of abominable things is in their vessel. You see that? And we see that swine flesh is connected straight to Satan. That mouse is connected straight to Satan. Huh? Let's get back. Matter of fact, let's do some more on swine flesh. Before we go back to Genesis, let's do some more on swine, uh, uh, swine flesh. Let's go to Proverbs 11. Proverbs 11, 22. Type in y'all. We're going to start it at verse 20. Type in y'all nines when y'all get there, family. Pro Book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 20. Book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 20. Get a done family. Type of y'all nines when y'all get there. Bit ya, Shalawan Queen, where you been? Hope all is well, she bro. <clears throat> Type of y'all nines when y'all get there. See, we see that we must we must cleanse ourselves of this flesh on a spiritual and physical level, y'all. Straight up. All right, let's get it done. We got the nines in the building. All right, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 20. Uh -huh. They that are of a forward heart are abomination to the Lord. You see that? Or oh, abomination to the Lord. Whenever you see this word abomination, no swine and pig or mouse coming right up after it. I'm telling you. So these are with a forward heart. A forward heart is, is somebody that uh, devises mischief. Somebody that has a, a, a provoking, a demonic provoking mindset. You see that? That's a forward heart. Because the heart is the mind. Come on. But such or as, I mean, but such as are upright in their way or his delight. Come on. Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. Ooh, you see that? The wicked I'm going to punish. All that wicked stuff we going around doing, that stuff has to be answered to on the day of judgment, y'all. So watch what you're doing and you better starve and cut off that flesh. Straight up. Quit feeding that beast. Quit, just because it got an appetite don't mean it's hungry. Don't mean it need to eat, y'all. Just because it got an appetite don't mean that it needs to eat. I'm going to say it again. Just because it has an appetite doesn't mean it needs to eat. Come on. But the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Ooh, all praise. Now, check out verse 22, y'all. Peep how the Most High does this and how he put man and beast in the same uh, category when you actually start thinking with your lower nature, when you start thinking with your animalistic nature, when you start thinking with your reptilian brain. Check this out. 
as a jewel of gold. And now we know gold. Gold is precious commodity. Gold is really currency. It's the real money. The currency is the real banks, like a river bank or a current, which is a river. All this go back into this wordplay I've been talking about for years, y'all. It says so gold, which is something a precious commodity, a precious metal that can be backed by currency, which is a currency. Come on. As a jewel of gold uh -huh. in a swine's snout. As a jewel of gold. So picture you putting all your money that you worked hard for, real solid currency, into a pig's nose. Right? Check this out. So is a fair woman, which is without discretion. <laughs> mm. See that? So he just said a fair woman that's not discreet. A woman, a harlot, basically. A, a, a harlot that run her mouth. He just said that's like putting, because look, remember, when a woman got married, we gave them nose jewels. And we gave them bracelets. So it says, don't marry a pig, meaning don't marry a woman that do not have discretion. But notice he used a woman that's in wickedness. It called her a pig. It called her swine. Do y'all see the similarities here? Why is he talking this type of language when it comes to the Bible? Huh? You see that? It's all about that appetite of the beast that's within inside of us. And we need to make sure that we check on a spiritual dietary law and on the physical dietary law. We need to go back with a fine tooth cone and make sure that we're eating righteously. Make sure we hanging around righteously, making sure our conversation is righteous. You see what is going? Beast, a dog too. Yes. It says a, a shameful woman should be counted to for a dog. That's a bitch caught a female dog. You see that? So notice that whenever whenever we become wicked, all of a sudden he start talking. He start uh, he start basically comparing us into animals that we ain't supposed to eat on a dietary law. <laughs> Do you see that? That is deep, man. Nah, here you go. All right, finish yeah. off that verse again. Nah, that's the end of it. Oh, you want me to read it again? Yeah. Verse twenty-two again. As a jewel of gold and a swine snout, so is a fair woman, which is without discretion. Ooh, let's hit another one. Let's hit uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 7 and 6. Book of Matthew, chapter 7 and 6. I ain't going to do too many of them. They'd be the other ones. Y'all write this down. Write this one down. Matthew 8 and 31. Matthew 8 and 31. Write that down. But we're going to do Matthew 7 and 6 real quick. I hope I wrote that down right, too. I got it right. Okay. Matthew 7 and 6. Let's get it done, fam. Type in y'all nines when y'all get there. <coughs> Uh, happy y'all now, so y'all get there. Good looking, Mike, Michael Ban Yisrael, for uh, posting these chapters and stuff. That way, yeah, all praises, man. Appreciate it, brother. Appreciate it. All right, come on, let's get it, King. Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 6. Uh huh. Give not that which is holy onto the dog. Oof. Oof. Is it actually talking about dogs? Or is it talking about rebellious men with Greek mindsets? Or is it talking about Pharisees? So it says, don't give what's holy on a dog. So they ain't going to know what to do with the wisdom. You see that? Come on. Neither cast ye your perils Oof. before swine. Don't be trying to drop jewels and give pearls. Be, be casting. Don't cast your pearls before pig-eating people that don't want to get in the truth. That's too far into gluttony with sin. It says you actually giving your peril over to pigs. They don't want to eat that. They want to eat the slops. They want to eat the trots. They want to eat their own boo-boo. You see that? They don't want to eat the pearls of God. You see how similar this stuff is when it comes to man that, that's given over into the appetite of the beast? Don't cast your pearls before swine, meaning don't drop jewels and try to bring a foolish person into the truth. You're wasting your time. Spinning You're spinning your wheels. Ain't just hard how, yeah. how it's coming together? Yeah. Come on, finish it off. At least they trample them under their feet. See that? At least they, they trampling them under their feet. They don't care. Even though, even though this, even though these, these pearls, I ain't even know Mally hit that early. I'll pray. Same spirit. Even though these pearls are precious commodity to a pig, to a swine, is not. The jewels of God don't mean nothing to a to a man that acts like a pig that have a gluttony nature. He want to eat the slops. He don't want to eat good. He want to eat the sloppy stuff. You see that? All right, come on, King. And turn again and rend you. Ooh, turn again and rend you. All right, let's go back. We're going to go back to Genesis, and we're going to finish this chapter out. We're going to hit a couple more verses, and we're going to go and get up out of here. So far, though, do y'all have an understanding, an overstanding, an understanding of this lesson? If y'all do, type in y'all sevens, and we're going back to Genesis. 
said, we don't need to hold y'all long once y'all got some understanding. Ain't no point of us talking to sun up to sun down if y'all get where we going and if y'all get this lesson. Eat to live physically and spiritually. Don't end up in the belly of the beast. That's right. That's right, she wrote. Test the spirit always. Awake and, as awake and asleep, Zion. That's right. Most definitely. She get the quote of the day, boy. <laughs> she, she, been, she been having all quotes, boy. She been hitting them there. All right, we, uh, we back in Genesis. Chapter 3. What verse did we leave off on, King? We on verse 17, then. We on verse 17. We got a couple more to read out of here. Let me get through real quick. Let me go get some tissue. I'll read some real bad. Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. And to Adam, he said, Because thou hast hearkened, to the voice of thy wife and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Curse is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Right? Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Come on. And the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread mm. till thou return into the ground. Come on. For out of it was thou taken. Mm. But thus thou art, and thus shalt thou return. Come on, King. And Adam called his wife name Eve, mm -hmm. because she was the mother of all living. And to Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skin. So where did flesh come from? Flesh came from what? Eating and satisfying the appetite of the beast. This is where fleshly nature came from. You see that? Because we used to be light beings wrapped in light until we 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 broke the commandment of God with the, the eating laws in the Garden of Eden. Not in the temples, but in the Garden of Eden. And guess what happened? For that we all die. Now we have coats of skin, which I call bondage for the wages of skin, which is sin, is death. Come on. Verse 21. And to Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. So she got what she wanted. She wanted to become a God. She got it. But look, look at the price that it that it came with. Yeah. Just like when we start this off in the Proverbs chapter 23, it was saying, when, when you sit at the table with a ruler, it says, be careful not to just eat. Now make sure you be diligent and think about what's before you and put a knife to your throat if, if you're giving over to your appetite. She didn't do none of these things, and for that, we all die. Come on. Verse 22. And the Lord said, because the man has become as one of us to know good and evil, and now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life, eat it, and live forever. So now it says, unless he starve out this beast and starve out this beast's appetite and eat of Christ, eat of the mind, eat of the higher mind and not of the lower self. Starve out the old lower self and eat of the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. It says you don't get the kingdom of God no more. You see that? So in order to reach your high potential, in order to reach the kingdom of God, you literally have to starve out this appetite of the beast that's within inside of you. Come on. Verse 23. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. Ooh, from whence he was taken? Come on. Verse 24, so he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden, cherubim. See that? So we got driven out of paradise. We got driven out of paradise because of a bad what? Diet. Because of the beast. Because of giving in to flesh. Because giving in to our lower self. And this is why fasting is so important. This is the reason why fasting is so important. I still got to do part two of it. I'm going to do that probably Tuesday or something. But this is why fasting is so important. We must humble ourselves before the Lord. Come on. Verse 24 again. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubim and a flame sword which turned it every way to keep the way of the true life. Yes. Yeah, so from there, I want to go to Titus. Let's go to the book of Titus real quick. We go to the New Testament, Titus. Get Titus. You at Titus? Dang. We're gonna do Titus chapter one. It ain't that much to read when we write Titus chapter one. 
Then we're gonna hit this Levitical law, getting a, uh, a couple more of the scriptures. We're gonna go and get up out of here. <laughs> we doing our whole chapter. A Titus, yeah. <laughs> well, I couldn't even tell you. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> Once y'all get to uh, Titus chapter one, type in y'all lines. Yes, remember the lesson is called the appetite of the beast within, family. You must control this appetite. Titus chapter one. We're gonna read the whole chapter. Let's get her done. Ooh, that's right, sus. Your queen said something important. She said, so let's get this straight. Before this, we only knew good, and now we gotta fight to only focus on the good. It's straight up, man. It's straight up. So 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 like don't no, know. Right. <laughs> you sound like your husband, sis. <laughs> All right, let's get it done. All right, the book of Titus, chapter one, starting in verse one. Uh -huh. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, uh -huh. according to the faith of God's elect, and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness, mm -hmm. in hope of eternal life which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. That's right. But hath in due times manifested his word through preaching. Through what? Through preaching. Uh -huh. Which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. Come on. To Titus, mine own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. Uh-huh. For this cause left I thee in Crete. You see that left thee in where? Crete. Let's look at the word Crete real quick because Crete is very, very important. Look at the word Crete. Crete is an uncertain derivative, if I said that right. It says Crete, an island in the Mediterranean area. See that? It's an island in the Mediterranean area called Crete. Peep how he feel about these Cretian Negroes, boy. Peep what he say about them. Come on. It says, for this cause left I thee in Crete. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That thou should have set in order the things that are wanting. Come on. And ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. See, so he appointed pastors, preachers, and all of that there. He set up a church out there. And basically, when he set up this church out here in Crete, man, they got to doing some, some selfish things, right? Pete, Pete, what they was doing, and Pete, what he called them for doing these things. Come on. If any be blameless. And he's talking to teachers, right? Then we read pastors, teachers, preachers. Mm -hmm. So he's talking to preachers and teachers. Peep, peep this. Come on. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly. For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, uh -huh. not, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, but lucre, mm -hmm. but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful words as he had been taught, that he may be able to, by sound doctrine, uh, both to exhort and to convince the gainsayer. Come on, for there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers. Ooh. Especially they of the circumcision. You see that? So it's talking about, it says there's so many vain Negroes and self-pleasing, man-glorified people that's of the circumcision. Being of the circumcision meaning you're in this faith. You know who you are and you actually, it's teaching this Bible and you walking out or you acting like you in the truth. So he said there's many out here straight pretending, y'all. People, what he call them? No, these pretenders. Come on. Whose mouths must be stopped. Who what? Mouths must be stopped. We got to stop these Negroes' mouths. They call them division, separation, being one-sided, all types of sorcery going on. It says these people with these mouths need to be stopped. Peep what he called them, though. This is the point and the reason what I'm trying to get to, what he called them. Come on. Who subvert whole houses. You see that? They do what? Subvert whole house they overthrow whole households have everybody with inside of the body of israel hating each other division and separation come come on teaching things which they ought not teaching things which they ought not which is hatred huh see that division slander. discord slander amongst a brotherhood watch this watch what he called these people though because remember this is talking about the appetite of the beast that's within man right 
Such an evil spirit. That's right, bot, y'all. Slow belly. So, yeah, we getting there, though. Come on, Michael. Look, Mike Iel, he already jumping. He already jumping. Shit. Yeah, Come man. On. You cheat, Michael. <laughs> Come on. For filthy Lucree say. Uh -huh. Lucre. 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 Yeah. All right. Uh, verse 12. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, the Cretans, the who? The Cretans uh -huh. are always liars. They are always liars. They're liars. They're what? Evil beasts. They're evil what? Beasts. <laughs> <laughs> he, did he call wicked ass men evil beasts that have these certain type of characteristics? I'm going to let y'all answer that for y'all selves. Y'all know he did. He called them evil beasts. Evil beasts, y'all. Come on. Slow bellies. Slow bellies. Let's look up this word evil beast. And remember, the belly of the what, y'all? Beast. Let's look at the word beast. From a derivative saying, a what? Dangerous animal. A venomous wild beast. Snakes. Swine. Mouse ass niggas. Rat negroes. Beast. You see that? Given into the animalistic nature. Given into their lower selves. Trying to feed and to please the flesh. Trying to please the appetite of the beast, which is self, fleshly, carnal nature, y'all. Do y'all see that? Slow bellies. Huh? Woo wee. Come on, let's keep reading. Verse 13. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebu rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. You see that? We got to rebuke them uh, sharply. And the best way is starve them out. Let them know. Let them know, hey man, you acting like a pig. You acting like a snake. You acting like a mouse, a rat. You acting like a wolf in sheep clothing. You acting like an otter. You acting like all these things that we ain't supposed to be eating. Come on. Verse 14. Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Uh -huh. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. Come on. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. Woo. They profess that they know God, but in words they deny Him. Ooh. Being abominable. Being what? Abominable. Being what? Abominable. Being abominable. He called them beasts. Notice, abominable and beasts. That swine. They always they back to back. Come on. And disobedient. Uh huh. And onto every good work, reprobate. Reprobate. You reprobate. See that? You do y'all see that, y'all? Now, if y'all got some understanding, understanding on that, type in some sevens real quick. You got something to read. Yeah. If y'all got some understanding and overstanding on that type of success, have y'all said it again? All right, you guys. All right, you, you want to read something real quick, Uriah? Yeah. Go, yeah. go and call it out. Come on. All right, this uh, includes the XDs in the Bible, chapter 3. Verse 19 through 21. Chapter 3, verse 19 and 21. All right, verse 19 says this. It says, For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. Ooh. Even one thing befalleth them. As the one died, so died the other. Mm. Yeah, they have all one breath, so that man had no preeminence above a beast for all his vanity. Yeah. All mm. go into one place. All are of the dust, and all turn to dust. That's right. Now, I ain't got no head cold. I told Ezra to turn the air on. Right. He turned the air down <laughs> to, to I think, 55. Like, like 45. Like 45. 45. <laughs> he told hey, me it to right. click. I told it to a click. I ain't saying it to a click <laughs> physically. Use it when you turn to 75. Oh, okay. Kick yeah. on. So, over so, the rhythm. Look, yeah. hey, I done got so cold. <laughs> my mucus membrane done rushed and warm my body up. That's why I'm sneezing and all type of stuff. I ain't got no head cold. Ezra done got us. He killing us up in there. Right. I feel like I'm in Antarctica. Okay. Right? That's all. Awesome. <laughs> see. Verse 21. Uh-huh. It lets you know that, uh, Man has a spirit, and he has a he can have a spirit of a beast. He has the spirit of a beast, the right. animalistic nature. Come right. on. So verse twenty one, it says this: It said, "Who knows the spirit of man that goeth upward, and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth?" Woo! See that? So the spirit of the beast is your carnal nature, your flesh that goes into back into the dust, and then your actual spirit that God gave you that goes into Him and adore Him. That's an excellent scripture, brother. Excellent scripture. You see that, y'all? All right, so from there, we just read Titus. Let's get into this Levitical law. 
Let's go to Leviticus chapter 11. We're going to get through here and read a couple scriptures. Then we're going to go and get up out of here because y'all have an understanding, overstanding, and understanding so far. So we ain't going to drag y'all along or nothing like that. All praises, all praises. All right. Now, it's some meat up in here. Ooh, we. Y'all ready for some meat? Y'all ready for some meat today? It's some meat up in here. I sure was on here blowing out all snot, boy. I'm like, man, that, yeah, that, 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 slow. that deal done started some stuff up. All right, we're in the book of Leviticus, chapter 11. We're going to start at 1. Type in y'all nines once y'all get here, family. So the real person is you when ain't nobody looking. Yep, the real person the, yep, the real person is you when ain't nobody looking. You you, you your true self when you behind a closed door. <laughs> Most definitely. Where's the beef? <laughs> <laughs> and nowhere around me, she brew. Nowhere yeah. around me. <laughs> Iris Stephan, Shalo, Shalo, Koi. Corey Moore, Terrell, Shalom. All right, let's get it done. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Come on. Whatsoever parted the hoof. See, so whatsoever parted the hoof. So the hoof, let me show y'all some pictures real quick. It ain't no presentation or nothing, but I did save a few pictures. That way y'all can get a gist of what I'm talking about here. So let me show y'all what parted the hoof. Uh, da, 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 da. Do I got the hoof? Is it her? Is it her? Let me blow this picture up for y'all real quick. Hold on, let's chew up the cud. Unclean, let's see. I don't sell right here either. And I ain't gonna go off the computer. So the hoof, the hoof is basically, <clears throat> if you ever seen like a, a, a pig's feet, or if you see like a camel feet, that's the part of the hoof. It's the actual picture. Matter of fact, let me Google it real, real quick. Let me Google it. Let me Google it and I can show y'all on the, uh, Google it real fast. Matter of fact, keep reading, man. We we just throw the pictures up or something. So whatsoever part of the hoof, I'm gonna just look up the word hoof for y'all. I had the pictures on, man. This computer been tripping. All right. So whatsoever part of the hoof, what's if you look the word hoof, it says a claw or a split hoof, a claw. So it's that hard calcified thing that's at the bottom, like a horse, but it's a split in it, right? It's a split. So whatsoever part of the hoof, and the reason for the split is. It's spiritually and symbolically, it shows you the separation of how you are in the world, but you're not of the world. So that's the spiritual significance of the pardon of the hoof, right? Come on. Verse 3. Whatsoever part of the hoof and it's cloven footed. And it's cloving footed. Let's look up the word cloven footed. So the word cloven is to split or tear, to upbraid, to cleave, cloven, to rend, to stay. So it's not split all the way. It's just a little split, and then it connects itself back to the back. Now, this shows you that you can be into the world, but you can change your life over and still come back around to the right side. You see that? Once you start thinking about it metaphysically and symbolically, this is the reason why we can only eat of these things, and they only can do particular things. It's because spiritually they mean something. And all of this stuff actually came from the garden mindset before it came physically. Because remember, we was commanded to eat herbs and fruits and vegetables at first. We didn't eat meat. You see that? Yes, set apart. It represents set apartness. Exactly. You got it, Bot Yah. Come on. And then notice it's a uh, clover foot. It means to cleave. Yeah, it means to cleave, to cleave on one of God, to cleave onto the spirit. Come on. And chew it the cud. And chew with the cud. Now, the thing about chewing the cud, if you actually get into chewing of the cud, now I can't read this for y'all because this is one that stayed on the computer. So when you actually get into reading of the chewing of the cud, the picture that I just pulled up, it, it gives a, a good definition of that, y'all. And we're going to break that down spiritually too. So here go the cud. Let me blow it up for y'all. All right, chewing of the cud is when the grass is, re or the herb, because that's what lambs and stuff eat. See, and notice we only eat things, the animals that we do eat, I'd say don't eat no meat at all, but the Bible says you can, which is cool. But the ones that we all commanded to eat is the ones that only eat herbs. We don't eat animals that eat other animals. You see that? So it says chewing uh, of the cud is when the grass is regurgitated and chewed 
by the flat molars and polymolars. So what happens is they eat the herb, they chew it, and when they chew it, they chew it real good. They literally swallow it, and most of them throw it back up, and they re-eat it again. So it get re-digested. Now, this is what you're supposed to do when it comes to doctrine or when it comes to the word of God. You're not supposed to swallow the word of God. You're supposed to digest it. You're supposed to chew it. It says, what's up? I'm chewing my cud. Sometimes I chew over a hundred times before what? Swallowing. See, this is what we're supposed to do when it comes to the word of God. It comes to anything. We're supposed to take it and take every part of it, hear both sides of the story. Then we swallow and then we digest it. You ain't just supposed to swallow the piece whole. It'll choke you out. It'll kill you. You see, so when we come into the metaphysics of why we eat these certain type of animals or why we eat these certain types of clean things, we can apply it to our physical body, our spiritual bodies, spiritually. This is the reason for that. It says a cow makes between 40, what they say? 40 million is 60,000, 40,000. Oh, uh, 40,000 and 60,000 jaw movements a day chewing. Now, are we really digesting all spiritual food like that? Or are we just out here just eating? Huh? Eating anything like pigs do. See, this is the reason why we can't eat a pig, but we can't eat a goat or we can't eat a, a lamb because they actually chew of the cud. They actually split of the uh, huff and have the cloven feet. And all these spiritual things mean they are set apart people. They're in the world, but they're not of the world. See that they cleave onto the word of God and they digest the word of God. They hear both models of the story and they have good judgment. You see that? If y'all got some understanding, some understanding of that real fast, type in some sevens and we can keep going. Type in some sevens and we can keep going. Mustard Drink says on the clean, unleash the beast. Yes, unleash the beast. And then it got uh, it got 666 on there too. They always say chew your food properly before you swallow. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. All right, so we got some understanding. I'm seeing some sevens. Anybody got any questions about what we talking about real fast? Ask your questions because I know we get into some meat, and I want everybody to have this understanding before we keep going. So the reason why we must chew up something that split the uh, that split uh, that split the huff that's cloven footed. Splitting the huff just shows the split. Shows you being separated. Shows you being sanctified, right? So the the cloven foot shows actually you being in the world and not of the world. And then chew another cud actually shows that you actually digest the word of God and you cleave on to the word of God. Now, when you start getting to pigs and and snakes and all these other things that we ate, the the, the bad fowls and stuff that we can't eat, notice it be the total opposite. And they don't do none of these things. They actually eat other flesh. They eat other beasts. We don't eat things that eat other beasts, meaning we don't eat things that eat fleshly nature. This is how you know you're not supposed to be giving in to the appetite of the beast in the first place. Okay, she said that's uh, Wesley John. That's uh, crystal clear. All praise, all praise. All right, come on with it. So look, let's get up off of this. Let's let's get back into the uh, scripture. Let me pull the Bible out back up. All right, where we leave off at, King? I'm on verse uh, four. All right, we on verse four, fam. Verse four. Nevertheless. These shall ye not eat of them that chewed the cud, uh -huh. or of them that divided the hook, uh -huh. as the camel. As the what? Camel. Uh -huh. Because he chewed the cud, but divided not the hook. See, cause, so, but he divided not the hook. And it's showing you around people. Okay, so it's saying, even though, even like, let's let's put this in a uh, let's put this in the perspective of hanging around people. Okay, he might have good conversation, but this nigga's still a backstabber. You see that? So he might chew up the hood and, and be cloven footed, but uh, he yeah, might be cloven footed and have the huff, but he don't chew up the cud. You see that? So you might be around people that got good jobs. Yes, they got goodly conversation, but behind closed doors, they doing all matter of wickedness and sin. Yeah. See that? So it's, it's showing you how we supposed to uh, apply this to our spiritual bodies. And when you eat none of these things, you supposed to digest that spiritually knowing, okay, I'm eating something that eat herbs. Okay, I'm eating herbs. I'm not eating flesh. I'm not giving into the beastly appetite. You see how we can actually do this and coincide in what we're talking about here? Come on. I'll we'll let you know, like, he eats the word of God, but he don't set himself apart. Oh, he what? He don't set himself apart. He, I say that again. I like that. It's like he's, uh, and then, you know, like the camel, you know, like a man's uh, mindset, like he eat the word of God, but he's not setting himself apart. Meaning he just, he a hero of the word, and not, not a, a doer. doer. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, that's daggers. See that? So he's a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word. 
All right, come on. It says in the coney because he chewed the cud, but the bat is not the hook. He is unclean to you. Uh-huh. And the herd because he chewed the cud, but the bat is not the hook. He is unclean to you. You see that? So once you really start getting into this dietary law, now we ain't going to go through it because in my next part two about the, uh, the humbleness, I want to bring out this and show y'all pictures and everything. But you see, for the most part, you see why we can't eat unclean things. It's not literally because they're unclean physically. It's because they unclean physically and spiritually. <laughs> and you are what you eat physically and spiritually. Read that one, read that one last verse, and then we're gonna go ahead and go to some more. You scroll. Well, uh, verse seven. Yeah, read verse seven. Verse yeah. seven. And the swine, though he debated the hook and be it clothing footed, yet he chew it not the cud. Uh -huh. He is unclean to you. He is unclean to you. So it has to have these three principles. And notice it was three. It must. It must have a huff, a splitted huff. It must have a cloven foot, and it must chew up the cud. That's father, spirit, and son. Just like it, everything breaks down to three in a righteous order. So once you really start putting the metaphysical and the spiritual mindset to these things, you see why the Bible is written in the format that it's written in. All right, so I want to get on the wolf now. Let's go on the wolf. Let's go to Acts 20. Acts 20, 29, and you give me Ezekiel 22 and 27. Acts 20, yep, Acts 20 and 29. We got a few more scriptures. We're gonna go and get up out of here. It's crazy how to look. Man, yeah. just like it just show you how the Lord loves us, man. Just like, all right, so the people uh you know, I right, so they lusted after the meat. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, look, I told y'all to eat the herbs, but since y'all lusting after the meat, they go meat. I'll give you the meat, but at the same time, I'm gonna show you inside of the meat what I was talking about. Yeah, okay. why you ain't supposed to be eating it. <laughs> straight <laughs> up, straight up. Hey, daggers, daggers, man. Acts 20 and 29. And 29. Y'all type in y'all knives once y'all get there. Yeah, that would be. Uh -huh, yeah, Especially deep. about the clothing. Food That's what water. I'm saying. That's deep, man. Again, family, we're not teaching you to abstain from me. I want nobody to say that we, we teaching them to abstain from me. No, I'm not teaching you that, but I, I suggest it, though. I suggest you don't eat me. I suggest you don't eat it. Notice yeah. he said he, su he suggests. Yeah. He's not commanding. It's, it's, it's not a commandment at all. But it's hey. Different. I, I won't. I ain't finna eat it. I'm telling you that right now. So no, it's in the Bible. Eating meat is in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? You that you got clean and you got unclean. Right, but the original diet. About. But the original. The next lesson we doing the the original organic diet in in the beginning it was meatless, and that's just is what it is. And that's what we going back to. You won't be eating no lamb stew in the kingdom of God. You won't be eating no lamb stew. Christ, Christ is your lamb. Christ is your lamb. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on with it. All right, the book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 29. I'm glad you said that, though, because they show like y'all yeah. show like they're talking about me and my brothers. Man, y'all keep on there teaching that you cannot eat meat, yeah. it's a sin. Yeah, then I'm nah. gonna hear about it Sunday. <laughs> nah, just say, like, look, just go on record, but you know, just pay attention, like, man, just. Pay attention to like, man, we supposed to be here to learn, not to call discourse, man. Yeah, most definitely. All praise, all praise. All right, come on with it. Acts chapter 20, verse 29. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves. Ooh, shall what? Grievous wolves uh -huh. enter in among them. So is he talking about actual wolves in, in the forest and in the jungle? Or is he talking about Negroes that have grievous mindsets? That's envious. Huh? That's hatred. He's talking about men. Come on. Not sparing the flock. Is he actually talking about a flock or a herd, or is he talking about the flock, which is the body of the Messiah? Mm -hmm. See, you see through all our scripture, you see us linking, uh, he, he links us to animals, clean and unclean, right. depending on your cleaner, unclean mindset. Let's go to Ezekiel 22, chapter 27. Ezekiel 22, chapter 27. You said chapter 27? Yep, Ezekiel 22, chapter 27. <laughs> verse 27. <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 27. Okay. Yeah, okay. I uh Ezekiel. Type in y'all now so y'all get there. We reading two more scriptures. You real got something to read out of this uh book yeah. of Jasher, and then we're gonna get up out of here. Right, this is our last two verses, y'all. Come on with it. All right, uh Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 27. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves, <laughs> ravening the prey. You see that? So princes are kings. How's princes are like wolves raving in their prey? Meaning these Negroes are like predators. Mm -hmm. Come on, to what? To shed blood. To shed blood and what? And to destroy souls. So people that want to destroy show, uh, souls, shed blood in dishonest, in dishonest game, he called them wolves. 
And these are how the princes of this earth is. These are how the Pharisees was. You see what he called them. He called them wolves. And these are wolves in what? Sheep clothing. Well, we. And notice he said uh, they was killing the slave, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, the slave. Right. So look, and that's what uh, wolves do. That's what wolves do. So uh, Jasher chapter 1. You can pull up? No, nah, I ain't going to pull up. Okay, look. Uh, Jasher chapter 1. I'm going to start at verse 19. It's only two verses, y'all. So Jasher chapter 1, verse 19. It says, And Abel answered his brother Cain and said unto him, What is there between me and thee, mm -hmm. that thou shalt eat the flesh of my flock and clothe thyself with their wool? Mm. And now, therefore, put off the wool of my sheep, which thou hast clothed thyself with, mm -hmm. and recompense me for thy fruit and flesh, which thou hast eaten. Ooh. And when thou hast done this, I will then go from thy land, as I have said. You see that? You see how deep that is, y'all? He put on wolf, I mean, he put on sheep clothing, but he was a wolf. Remember, he killed his brother. Mm. A wolf in sheep clothing. Mm. All right, I think I just fixed this, y'all. Let me see. Let me see what we got going on here. All right, it says I'm back on. Make sure I'm on, y'all. I ain't trying to uh switch off or nothing. Uh, check, check and make sure I'm on. Can y'all still hear me? Type in some nines if y'all still can hear me. Type in some nines if y'all still can hear me. Am I still on, Anya? Man, what is going on, man? Yeah. yeah. Yes, audio is on. Do y'all see anything on the screen? Man, what is going on? Let me see. Uh. All right, it says resume Google her. Let me try that. Anybody know how to flip my screen back? Teach me something. <laughs> Dude, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on here. So what is if you hit that, what did it do? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what happened. Oh, okay. Are you real figured it out? The big man figured it out. He's a big man now. <laughs> All right, let me get him off this and change it back. Uh, hold on. Give me one second. I'm trying to figure this out. All right. All right. Oh, man. All right. Let me Man, what are you doing? Is it? I hear Okay. Stop. Nah. Bro. I, I see you in the corner. I hear you. Oh. Can y'all see me? Screen. Can y'all see? That's some music. It is. Well, look, that's the end of the lesson anyway. I did want to holler. Let me see. Guys, you want to feel it? Yeah. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is crazy. I but well, that being said, uh, I, I try. try. But uh, uh look, look, anybody got any questions before we get up out of here? Yes. Hold on. Hold on. Can y'all hear me? I'm sorry. Yes. 
Yeah, the beast, beast, beast of God. <laughs> All right, with that being said, I'm gonna be a son. I love y'all being true. All praises to y'all. How will God show my shit again? What's up? Shallow. Everything we do, make sure it's on the Lord and I'm good. Yeah. Okay. They want to be stopped.